So I've learned that anything that you can do on a bicycle can be done on a motorcycle. Well, except this. But everything else, we can do everything else. Then I saw this. Challenge accepted. Come on, Craig. I don't think that was a challenge, Sean. It was a challenge. Let's go make a bike. And our bike of choice, 20 something, CBR 300, 200, what is it? 250, that's the bike of choice. So here is our diabolical plan. Step one, draw an awesome picture of the CBR. Okay, fine, I didn't actually draw it, I trace it, but it's still, it's it turned out pretty good. Step two, pet a, kit, pet a kitten. Dan, you messed with the steps again. No, not this time. Step three is to extend the factory swing arm, which happens to be made of steel, which is one of the reasons why we picked this bike. Then take the wheel from the other CBR and put it on the back. We then need to modify the front drive wheel with another sprocket so we can drive the rear drive wheel. And how do we plan on accomplishing that? A wizard. I, I don't really know, actually. Uh, this is kind of uh, some redneck engineering, but I will say on this project, we will be using CAD. No, no, not what you're thinking, though. No. Craig and Dan. But if we can accomplish this, this will be the first two-wheel drive Honda CBR to exist ever in the planet. But later, we actually might find out why no one's ever done this before. We'll then attempt to do some burnouts, and if all goes well, that's where the real fun starts. What do you think, Craig? I like it. <laughs> I think that plan is solid. It's and if solid. it doesn't work, we're just gonna do something else it's that works. It's a solid plan. I saw someone do it with a bicycle, so where do we start, Craig? So Craig and I get to work. We put the CBR in the lift, then I do this thing with my foot. And then we remove the rear tire from the other bike. I forgot we had that thing. At this point, the process is looking pretty cloudy to me of how we're gonna do this. But then Craig gets an idea. Twist it, pull it. Great. Do you wanna know what I was thinking? What were you thinking? Okay, here's what I'm thinking. We're gonna make our own swing arm. So we'll drill here and this will sit there and then it'll come back and we'll drill again. This metal to lay on top of here, that, this. Does it fix? Yes. Does it flex? Hopefully not if it's welded. So here is one of our other concerns. The bike, of course, has a rear suspension somewhere in here, and it's allowing the bike to go up and down and absorb bumps. If we secure the third tire directly to the swing arm, it might cause the rear tire to lift every time the suspension is compressed. But I'm no physics matician, so we're gonna cross that bridge when we get there. Right now, we have right now problems. It's possible, once we finish this up, this could be a new trend in motorcycling. T-Rex bike. They might say in the future, everyone's doing it. Those guys started something cool. Craig, isn't this what a drill press is for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think there's <laughs> it's a tool right here. It's his first day, Dan. Let him alone. So here's the part of the build that I call the part that I actually have to do some work. So while Craig was working on building the swing arm extension, I was tasked with perfectly fitting the sprocket where the brakes used to be. And to do that, we will be eliminating the rear brakes from the bike because brakes are for chumps anyway. So the front drive tire will have a sprocket on both sides, the left one being driven from the engine and the right one driving the second drive tire. But in order for this to work, I have to make sure that the drive sprocket is perfectly centered or everyone in the galaxy will die. And here's a really awesome montage of me doing the thing that I just told you that I was about to do. You do it. We all know you use your drill as a hammer too. Don't get all high and mighty on me now. I forgot I brought a chop saw. Why don't I just use that? There's a lot of tools we're forgetting about. <laughs> yeah. Aftermarket swing arms can cost hundreds, thousands, or millions of dollars, but Craig was tasked to build one for just $13.20. And when he came back, he had a cheeseburger in his hand. Drill Team 6. That's right. But if anyone could build it, it's Craig. And I have 100% confidence in his abilities. Oh my gosh, how did that? Did you cut the, where, where did you, where was the hole supposed to be? 
What's going on over there? I'm over here achieving perfection and I'm hearing about the wrong hole. It was literally the first measurement I made. I screwed up. The whole bar is too short now. Well. It's gonna be tight. You don't have a lot of real estate to work with. Right, there you go. Real estate, don't have a lot of it. So that only lets us two inches on each side. I'm gonna let you do the measurements while I walk away. While Craig continues making the world's greatest swing arm. You wanna watch the master over here? I finished my part early and started trying to solve the other problem that we have which is how do we cut these tires in, sh in half and have them still hold their shape. So I first cut some tires in half. It's tougher than I thought because they wouldn't, this rubber would not slide easily. There's someone out there saying, that's not how you cut a tire in half, you idiot. <laughs> and to that guy, please tell me how you do in the comments. So my first idea is to fill the tires with spray foam. Maybe that'll work. Uh oh, it's expanding. All right, now we let it sit. We might not even need to, to do it like this. We could just, let's try it. Let's try this one. And don't eat it. Dan, I know you think it looks like whoopie pie cream, but it's definitely not. Well, what's gonna happen is it's going to, uh, it's gonna expand. And when it does that, we're just gonna get a knife and just sh shave it all off. Now, Craig has another idea. Look at this. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Now I'm trying to think of a business where I can sell cut tires for some stupid reason. And this is Craig's idea. Rubber mulch. Oh, so more rubber? More rubber. How does it smell? It doesn't smell good. My stupid idea was cut an inner tube and pack the inner tube full of this and then fold the ends over, tuck them in there, call it good. All right, let me try it. Somewhere in the world, this is someone's job. I don't know where, I don't know why. But someone spends all day shoving mulch into a hose. I don't know if it worked or not. A lot of this is gonna fall inside of the rim. The other thing we gotta figure out is how we attach the rim to this. And I think either screws or rivets the rim comes up in here. So, so it's all, almost we're making a, uh, a bead lock. So we let this one sit for a little while and you can see it's not actually, it's not actually getting hard because it's, it wasn't getting any, any air. So I'm gonna pull this back, see if that helps it out at all. We'll let it sit over here. But then this one, it's looking pretty good. This is, this is not the stiffest one. I gotta get a different one. There's one that's way stiffer than this one. Foam you mean? Yeah, this one's still too soft. So let me run out, grab the stiffer stuff while Craig keeps on working on that. So Craig did some welding, drilling, and just moving stuff around, not sure what he was doing. And it's in Craig's contract for me to give him a 10 second montage every four videos. So here's Craig's stupid montage. Ah, oh, that's hot, that's hot, that, and yeah. this, everything. Everything, everything's hot. Even me. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta stick metal together. We're strengthening up the swing arm. And after almost two entire days of us working on this thing, things were starting to fall into place like better than we thought it would. It was almost like it was meant to be. And after we looked at our creation and thought, that's not bad. In all this building, it got me reminded of one of my favorite Baba versus James, one, two through three. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Freewheel motorcycle was a huge success and possibly the greatest motorcycle I have ever driven. But the only thing that can make this thing better would be if we cut both of these back tires in half. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So what this thing's gonna be doing, and I'm just, I'm just gonna realize this, is it's gonna be constantly changing the wheelbase. So, so right now the tires are kind of fighting against each other. That's not gonna be a problem when there's only one wheel on the ground but it's gonna be like short wheelbase, long wheelbase, short wheelbase, long wheelbase, but a bajillion times a second. 
You know what I mean? Maybe hundreds of times a second. I don't know what that's gonna do. I don't think it's gonna give you the ultimate confidence going really heavy into a corner, but uh, who knows? So let's um let's cut these tires up and figure it out. So I was told by a lot of people that this would definitely not work. And you know what? I mean, maybe it won't work. But as it was once told to me from my grandfather, I'm too stupid to give up. And if it ends up working, I'm gonna wanna show it to you guys. And we've kind of been cooped up in here for a long time. We don't go out very much, but this year, we're gonna go out. We've got some events planned out and some trips, and we're coming out to you guys. And the best way for us to contact you is for you guys to join our super secret text group. The number's right here, just shoot it a text. Let's go back to the build. In the most scientific way possible, I drew the most perfect line. Everything has gotta be balanced. Those are amazing lines. They are really good. It's like a laser did it. It's very important for this thing to actually be, be rideable or work. These are very precisely, exactly cut. That's why we set up a man with a laser. Begin laser ignition! But it didn't work out, so we're gonna use a sawzall. It's at this point I'd like to point out the progression that our preciseness has dwindled. Considering the step we've gotten to, shouldn't it be getting better? Yeah, well, no. We're gonna take air out of them before you. Why? Uh, so it doesn't do something stupid. You mean like cutting wheels in half? Nailed it. <laughs> Go back and more than it won't. <laughs> <laughs> Get a fresh metal blade. There you go. They'll make saws all blades like they used to. How did they used to make them? Better. This kind of feels like riding those SRs home, those Yamaha SRs home. I'm all buzzy and vibrating. Oh, that's what? Yeah, that's kind of what this reminds me of. <laughs> The SR 500 feels like. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. There we go. Kill me that chump. That's how you do it right there. You can get the other side. <laughs> Nailed it. That is so perfect. Couldn't have done it any better. Hello. Craig? 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 Thank you, Sean. You in there, Craig? Yes, I am. I think that's our move right there. Really busted up that valve stem, didn't I? I don't think it's gonna hold air anymore. Just can't. I'd be like, here's your problem. <laughs> did you check the valve did stem? Did you check the valve stem? Was check, tight? Did you check, you check the valve stem? <laughs> Damn, that's cush drive. That's a good thing? Yeah. Cause there, now that's off. This is horrible. You look very sparkly, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's my idea. Here's the rim. I got this piece of, I don't know what it's called, pipe, hose pipe. It was too big. I cut it in half. That gives me a little more space, a little more flexibility. they like the broken, the bad part of the rim. We can get this to go. Yeah, get it like this. Get it real tight on there. Get it tight everywhere. Strap it down, maybe zip tied or something like that. And then drill it, rivet, drill it. So this thing here is giving me a little bit of a fit. So I'm gonna try this because I think it's gonna be just as easy and just as fast. Yeah, it's just a butter knife. You're saying that thing's holding you back? It is, absolutely. This is taking forever. Yeah! <laughs> we doing the rivets? Yeah. Did you call it a ribbit, Dan? What? Did you just call it a ribbit? Ribbit. Like a frog? Frog. Frog. Isn't that what they call her, Rosie the Ribbiter? Yeah. Craig, are you Rosie the Riveter? Yep. <laughs> I like them apples. Butterfly effect. I haven't seen Butterfly Effect. I've seen Butterfly Effect. You guys have a movie guy? I thought you were a movie guy, Dan. I like when the rivets fall down inside the back through here mm. and then get stuck. That's neat. <laughs> I mean, on a scale of one to amazing, that's about a 13. Yeah, that's a decent amount of weight right there. Greg, you do this. Wow. We just did a lot of work for me to flatten it. Nice. That's pretty good. I'd say so, man. Craig, do you want to dump some rubber mulch in it just for good measure? Dunk some rubber mulch in. Double rubber. <laughs> <laughs> that rubber mulch was a solid idea. 
Oh, I know. Just, just saying. I know. I had to cut a tire off of a hay tether one time out in the field with a pocket knife. That was horrible. I've been there with a pocket knife. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> do we have a shop back here? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Oh, it's a KTM, so you know it's good. KTM, you know it's gonna break. So we got our trusted KTM vacuum because, you know, you know it's gonna suck. Ouch. Think we should put some foam in there anyway? Sounds like a mess. I know you like playing with the foam. So while Craig was Whoa. busy shooting rivets at his eye and using tank traps to hold the bead on the tire, I was busy doing other things. How you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. <laughs> looks awesome. It does look awesome. I guess there's only one thing to do. It's gonna work better than it looks, too. You think so? Uh-huh, absolutely. So I'm gonna ride it. Yeah. We basically have a 50% chance of it working. That math checks out. How fast do you think I'll be able to go, Craig? I think these bikes top out around 65, 70. No, they do more than that. So, uh, you know, somewhere around there. Yeah, they'll hit 100. Really? Not me on it, they won't. I'm betting I can, I'm betting I'll do at least 30 miles an hour. If you hit 30, I'm going to be happy and a little scared. I'll be the one who's scared. Does it not like to go back up? That felt a little goofy. A little bit. Why is it going up and down? I'm not sure. Why is it doing that? I don't know. It's almost like one tire is bigger than the other. <laughs> it's turning better than it did before. I think we're on to something here. Y it's turning better? <laughs> this is amazing. We did it. And it turned so well. <laughs> Seven miles an hour. <laughs> well, you probably won't be able to notice the potholes anymore. Yeah, that's the best thing about it. You don't even notice potholes. <laughs> How fast are we going? Seven. Wait a second. What? I got a question. There's only one way to solve it. Catching. No, we can do a burnout. We can do this. Let's go back to the shop. Watch how good it handles. This thing shreds. It's like driving a caterpillar. Let's see how fast we can go. Ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Go! 22! Woohoo! Next year. I'm doing 25 miles an hour on a quarter. This is amazing. 25! <laughs> 23 miles an hour in a quarter. 25. 29! 30! <laughs> so, okay, why is it bumping? Why is it bumping up and down? Does it feel bumpy when I'm just when there's no load on it? It does, doesn't it? A little bit. Really heating up them tires. Both of them. Yeah. All of it. All of it. It's legit, man. I did 30 miles an hour. Oh, that doesn't help. <laughs> What if we strap the suspension down? I was thinking about it. Let's try it. That works though, that is awesome. 
So we thought that using tank straps to strap down the back end would make it a little bit smoother. Gotta wear my helmet and my, and my motor glove. Yeah. yeah! Is it better? Uh, no, not really. But it really didn't. I think we need to do some real world road tests. So after installing some rubber chips inside the wheels and then capping both ends off with spray foam and making sure that the timing on both wheels was still good, we were ready for the world premiere of this silly bike that we made. It needs a name. Comment below if you have a good idea. But the big question is, is the world ready for it? Let's do this. Let's go motorcycle riding. Let's go motorcycling. Giddy up, giddy up. I think it'll smooth it out. Oh yeah. I'm just riding a horse. <laughs> so as I rode the bike, I realized that I have finally bridged the gap between motorcycle and jackhammer. It's just dumping bulge out. And pretty quickly we realized that we were losing rubber chips, so we pulled over to fix the problem. My phone fell out. We were bouncing up and down so much, my phone fell out of my pocket. That's not good. So it's just shredding that. And now that's completely flat. If one's flat, they we need to make them both flat because it's making it worse. I think we should get all the rubber out of them. Come on, Greg, we gotta get this stuff out. We need to take it so professional to a dealership. Greg, I feel like we made the perfect motorcycle. I I think we really did. We finally bridged the gap between Buck and Bronco and Honda CBR. It's almost like riding a shake weight. Ben, make sure if I wreck this thing, you don't run me over. That's all I ask. You can hit him, just don't run him over. Everybody's in such a hurry. You filming Dan? I'm filming Dan, filming other people. Film me, filming Sean. Wow, you guys are getting, you guys are getting real meta over here. You mind um, come and look at a bike real quick? It's got a little, uh, it's kind of got a bump to it when you ride. I thought if you can give, just give it a visual outside real quick. If anything pops out of you. All right, cool. So we took it to the Honda dealership and had one of the mechanics come out and look at it. And he thought it was the stupidest idea he's ever seen. And he said he's seen many bikes like this, which I don't know if I believe that. But he didn't want to be on camera, so we can't show it. So guys, thanks for watching. That wraps up the video. This bike will be back. We will fix it. And next time, we're going to do a top speed run.